Hey everyone, so this is the final video on Andalusia Acrobatica and we're gonna get through the valuation today and then I'll do a bit of a summary of how I'm thinking about it. So if you want access to a company like this in, in Europe um, and a lot of the global markets of the world, you're gonna need a broker that can get you there and Interactive Brokers is the one that I use. Link in the description for that. Um, if you wanna take a demo account for a trial, you can do that through that link as well. So I highly recommend doing that before you uh, give them any money and trade with real money play around first. Okay, so I've got some crude metrics on the screen, but I firstly need to tell you that this is a thinly traded company. It is small, it's 150 million market cap at the moment in Italy, it's off the radar. And Ricardo, the CEO himself, owns 75% of this business. So there's not much free float out there for everyone else. Um, the metrics I've got here on the screen, we've got um, it's probably eight to 10 times PE ratio, about a four and a half enterprise value to EBIT. 10 times free cash flow. These look optically cheap, um, especially for a company that's growing its revenues at about 40% plus per annum for seven years now, um, with not a lot stopping it. The, yes, the government grants, of, the Italian government grants are gonna come off, but they've indicated with everything they've said so far in their um, updates that that's not gonna slow them down. The margins have been quite stable and I think they're very strong margins as well. They've got this insider ownership and this founder-led business. It's got very low debt, it's very capital light. Um, it's, I think, an important, safer service that is needed in the world. We wanna keep these buildings looking um, and preserved and great. You, this is a good service to help us with that. Um, I think it's unlikely to be disrupted by technology anytime soon. I think if we can think about like dr robotic drones fixing these things, yeah, they might be able to do window cleaning, but they're not going to be able to do facade work or um, there's a lot of things that a robot's going to struggle with for, I think, the foreseeable future, the short, medium term anyway. I think we've got 10 years out of this um, anyway. I don't see it coming along. Maybe I'm wrong though. So that's that's something, um, maybe you know more about that. Maybe there's uh, wall climbing robots that can do this better uh, at the moment. I don't know, but I, I've looked around and it doesn't look like there is. So the business, I also think has good opportunities to reinvest its money to, to grow further. And they've been able to show that relatively well. So it ticks a lot of my boxes. Um, one of the issues that I see so far is that, and I'm kind of pulling at straws here, is that there's a little bit of dilution through of the stock through the stock based comp. It is low. Um, I don't think that's a big issue being at one or two percent. I don't like the sales offices. This surely is an opportunity to save some money on rent, like commercial rent. Um, I just can't imagine them being useful. I, I could be wrong here. Um, surely people start their search on Google for this, but look, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I might be wrong. Maybe having the the retail footprint is fine, but anyway. I, doesn't make sense to me. Then there's the obvious risk of a macro slowdown. And that's probably likely, I don't know. And I'm not gonna assume 40% revenue growth moving forward anyway. So I'm just gonna assume that we're gonna go through a slowdown and then I'll just do the valuation based off that. And if we don't go through a slowdown, then this will be fine. But let's assume that we're going to get some tougher economic times and be really conservative with our numbers and then do the valuation based on that. So let's jump into that valuation now. Okay, so let's play around with some of the numbers here. We've got the current revenue I've put in. I've got, I'm gonna put a change to the growth rate. This is the um, owner's earnings after tax number. So essentially their margins, I've, I've dropped it a little bit to 13% just to be conservative. A future PE ratio, um, the dilution rate, it's about one to 2%. I've put it at 2% on the high side. Shares outstanding number, current market cap. What I'm gonna do, what I've done first is I've said, okay, growth is going to be, well, if this goes to zero, I've got over the right on the right hand side over here, I've got options of like scenarios that I'm sort of playing out here. So if it's fraud and I'm wrong and the guy is a criminal and if this thing whole thing goes to zero, which I'm going to give it a five percent chance of happening, considering it's been going for you know a decade or so now, and um, the guy has got seventy five percent of his net wealth tied up in the business, <laughs> I think that's pretty unlikely. Five percent is probably high. But let's assume there's a 5% chance this thing goes to zero. No need to do calculations for what the outcome is there. It's a zero. So, I've, so for the next five years, let's say growth is really slowed down. Let's say it even goes negative for a few years and positive for a few, like a little bit positive, but flat to a little bit of growth because they've been expanding with um, franchises and acquisitions. I think we can probably expect 
this 5% growth rate. And I've just said, this is the market's not going to respect this business and we're just going to put a PE of eight on it. Um, and that gives us essentially about the same price as we are today. So we're not losing money on this, but we're not getting anything. So that's just, that's what a 1x return is. And then I've done uh, a few different options here. T a 10, 10% growth rate for the next five years. Remember, it's 40% plus at the moment. And I'm just saying economic times are not going to be the same. We're coming right down to 10% growth. A PE on that 12 is very fair for a good business, a low um, with not much capital needed, and P of twelve is still probably pretty conservative. I'm saying there's a forty percent chance of this happening, right? That's a pretty high chance, even though I think I'm being very conservative here. That's you know, ten percent growth rate is still you know very reasonable, very respectable in any business to have ten percent for five years per annum. Then I've thought, okay. What is a little bit more, what is at least as likely anyway as that outcome um, is a little bit more growth and a bit better of a multiple. So 15% growth rate, 15 PE. I'm giving those two like uh, those two scenarios the most likely thing of happening, 80% in total for those two particular scenarios. One being slightly good, better, one being slightly worse. Uh, if we do get 15% growth and 15 PE, we're looking at a share price in five years of 58 euro. It's about 18 at the moment. So a triple from here. And then the last scenario, I'm like, well, let's assume that I can't I can't put 40%. That's just silly. But for, for five years, there's just too much going on, too much there. But let's say it does 30% for the next five years. Um, we don't get the economic downturn in Italy as we thought. There's a lot of demand there. They keep growing, they keep expanding, they keep doing what they've been doing. I think that's unlikely just because those growth numbers seem really high and a PE of 25, well, for a business growing at these speeds, it needs at least a PE of 25. So this is a scenario that is possible, but unlikely. It actually probably should be higher than 5%. Likely. It's, not a, it's more unlikely that fraud is gonna happen, but I'm trying to be conservative here. And this would turn the share price into 180 euro, which is a 10X from here at 18. Uh, and I've given that a, a likelihood of 5%. So that's how I've got my expected return here of a 2.6x return over the next five years. And compared to a lot of my other investments, this is really strong. If I've sort of talk, thought, thought through the risks, tried to be conservative with this, and I still get anything over 2.2, 2.6 is about as high, high as I've seen. Therefore, this is cheap on most calculations, even with an expected downturn. Um, this is this is attractive. The question I was really asking myself was, is this a value trap because of the boom time earnings? Possibly. Therefore, like I've done, I think I have really thought that through and mitigated my risk here by being conservative with my assumptions. To counter that claim a little bit, they actually have a lot of bookings already in place uh, and it's up from this time last year. So essentially their order book is stronger than it was 12 months ago which is a very good sign that they're at least holding the boom time earnings numbers. And it look, they're, they even said that they're growing off that. So we'll see over the next year or two how that actually plays out. I'm trying to be conservative with it though, because it is more likely that it was that is boom time earnings and things will be flat maybe for a, few, a year or two. When the pandemic was on uh, in 2020, they showed really good resilience and they grew a little bit as, and that was a pretty good test for a build for a business that goes into buildings. So um, I think that showed a fair bit of resilience. As you can see, I'm trying to temper my expectations on this as much as I can, um, but buildings are still crumbling and maintenance works are, are gonna need doing. Uh, contracts are already in place. I, I see these as actually really good quality revenue. Yeah, they will be affected by macro conditions, but I don't think as much as I think. So we've got a long runway to grow into. We've got good return on invested capital metrics. We've got uh, a, an ins very highly incentivized founder-led business. And we've got a very affordable price in a business that is relatively got, it got really good revenues and relatively stable and quite important, I would say. It's not a business that is, it's not a consumable, it's, it's services work. It's if you're building, if you have a hotel or something like that, and it is falling apart, 
you need to get that fixed. You don't really get much of a choice in that. You either go up there yourself, which I don't think you're going to, or you hire somebody who can come and abseil off the roof and get it done as quickly and as safely as possible. So I, I don't know, I, I see a lot of great things in this business. And this has got me thinking really seriously about investing in this business. So I'm very interested to hear comments, critiques, please try to pull this apart on me. Um, I would love some communication about this. So you can please leave comments in below. Uh, join my Discord group if you would like to go into it into, into detail and we can communicate there. There's a link in description for that too. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, study of a quite obscure niche Italian business. And yeah, if you have other businesses that you think I might enjoy, please share them with me too. And I hope you've enjoyed the video series and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.